Hello everybody, welcome to our Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello Scott. Hello Josh, my friend. Now there's all sorts of things going on in the gaming industry world, including the potential acquisition of From Software by Sony. Now this has been rotating around for the last few months, including the overall rumor that Sony are looking to buy a Japanese developing studio, or an overall co um, you know collection of studios, and a lot of different names have been bandied about from Square Enix to Capcom, but From Software have been highlighted by Japanese industry commentator man, Sir Kentodo, who I got the name wrong when I typed that out and I put him as Sirkin Toot. Nice and so it, it's not his name, but Sirkin Toot is a nice name. Um, now, he did a Twitter thread on the history of From Software and he said that uh, Tokyo based developing studio, that, that, that studio is one of his favorites, um, and said that Tokyo based From Software is currently rumored to be a uh, major and acquisitions candidate, merger and acquisitions candidate for Sony. Have you said murder and acquisitions there? They're a murder and acquisitions <laughs> candidate. They'd be murder in the sales you, figures. Patrick Bateman. Ah, ah, very nice. Very nice. Bless the reins. But um, in regards to uh, this, he's also done a follow-up tweet saying that um, he wasn't implying that they were actually going to buy them, which is why he spent his time outlining you know, the history of the company and saying that they're a potential acquisition candidate, yeah. but whatever. And this also goes alongside the fact that uh, Jeff Grubb over from GameSpeed and Giant Bomb said that there was a major acquisition coming. A lot of people thought it was Hideo Kojima's um, Kojima Productions. He said it's a big, it's something bigger hmm. than that, which would line up with it being from software. Um, all of this is just to say that it's worth talking about this as a potential way for Sony and um, FromSoft to go, because FromSoft have worked with Sony in exclusive capacity before yeah. when they did Demon's Souls. Now, obviously, the way that that stuff shook out, um, Hidetaka Miyazaki has said that he always wanted to do more with the Demon's Souls IP, but Sony owned it, and it took so long for all that stuff to shake out, and obviously, the remake of Demon's Souls was what launched alongside the PS5. Um, what do you think of the potential of From Software overall being gobbled up? I mean, it would be nuts, wouldn't it? It would be, like, really crazy time, like, time. video game insanity. But yeah. I, I don't know where I fall on this, Scott Telford, because it's every time, like, a big acquisition is about to happen, mm. people are like, oh, it could be these, it could be them. And I don't think it's ever been correct, any of the predictions, <laughs> like, pre-release. You know, like, these things are kept under wraps so tightly yes. that, you know, there's so educated guesses. Like, this is very much an educated guess. Yes. You know, like you said in the tweet, this is not him saying this is definitely going to happen, just saying that it'll definitely be on the radar in some form. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I imagine there's a lot of candidates on Sony's radar of who they want to acquire. But, yeah, I mean, I imagine both Microsoft and Sony are looking at From Software with, like, dollar bill signs in their <laughs> eyes. With, like, the, the, their tongue out, you know, just wanting to acquire them. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Elden Ring, like you said, you know, it's done insane, insane numbers. 12 mm -hmm. million copies, and that was a few weeks ago. That's probably much, much higher now. Dark Souls trilogy obviously sold incredibly well. Dark Souls 3, I think, mm -hmm. sold more than 12 million copies, you know. The oh, yeah, they're really high. is a developer that just doesn't miss. And it doesn't matter whether they're, whether they're doing, you know, franchises or whether they're doing new IP. It all seems to hit. So if you're Sony, you're probably wanting to lure them away, especially you said with you said mm -hmm. like the connections they had with teaming up for Demon Souls, teaming up for Bloodborne. You mm -hmm. know, this has been a relationship that they kind of forged over the past, and maybe they want to seal a deal by. The thing is, like, from software are on the, the form of their career. Like, they've gone from hit to hit to hit. Obviously, Elden Ring, like Josh said, is the biggest release they've ever had. Um, out selling Call of Duty the last couple of years worth of Call of Duties. Um, and, like, you know, being the biggest thing we've talked about in regards to their name in their history. Um, it's worth pointing out that they are owned by Katakawa, which are a, a Japanese company that acquired them in full by 2015. Um, and they themselves, Katakawa, have um, shares from Tencent, the Chinese conglomerate Tencent. So there are already lots of big conglomerate acquisition stuff going on yeah. around from Software's business interests. Now that's interesting because I think of From Software as this almost independently minded team that have sort of just latched themselves onto different publishers and done what they wanted to do. Like, you know, they obviously did Demon Souls with Sony and then Dark Souls with Bandai Namco and then Bloodborne was with Sony again, but it wasn't, um, you know, there was like a one-off kind of thing. Yeah. And then Sekiro with Activision and Elden Ring with Bandai Namco again. So I would think that this business model works best for them. I don't know how much it benefits them shacking up with Sony and then losing half of their market share because like it would be like, or their, um, you know, their sales or whatever, because then the next thing, Elden Ring 2, would be only on PS5. Or 100%. Like, I fully agree with you. I think there's a big distinction in whether this might happen and whether I want it to happen or yes. you want it to happen or anyone watching uh, at home wants it to happen mm. because, you know, I want From Software to stay independent for Same. as much as I, you know, really enjoy Sony's consoles and stuff. I wouldn't want to see them taken away. I don't want any workbenches. I, I, exactly. I don't, I don't want, want any wide linear segments. <laughs> 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 We've gone full wide now, my friend, with Elden Ring. There's no 
going God. back to wide linear. But I know what you mean. Yeah, you don't want it to become homogenized in a way that it might do if it comes under the Sony umbrella. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take players away from these um, different franchises that, you know, people love and embrace. You know, just looking at Elden Ring and seeing how much players have embraced it, mm -hmm. not just from a sales figures wise, but from a from a <clears> discourse <throat> perspective, you know, doing fan art, you know, getting into the mm -hmm. lore of it, sharing stories on Twitter, like that is valuable and that would still happen if From Software was locked down, but not mm -hmm. to the same scale. It's no. not going to sell, you know, the, the same amount. You know, it might still sell a lot, but it's not going to reach that mass audience that From has kind of managed to achieve despite it being improbable. Like they started <laughs> out making these incredibly niche games, made a name for themselves, proven themselves as quality developers, mm -hmm. and now they're like beloved in the mainstream more or less. Well, and that's they're like more or less unheard of. There's such an anomaly in that regard. Like, even if you look at their trophy data or whatever, you can see that people are getting through those games yeah. like in a way that they aren't finishing Red Dead Redemption 2 or Horizon um, or whatever else like you know people do love from software games and they're, they are such an anomaly and I wonder how much of that appeal they lose if they then get shackled to Sony and um, will start making things under the Sony umbrella I would hope that if this does go forward Sony don't interfere hardly at all get a, yeah. get a 60 frames a second patch out for Bloodborne <laughs> and then just go what do you guys want to do okay do that because um, we also know that there is um, potential of Elden Ring 2 or whatever the next FromSoft game is coming from Brandon Sanderson um, who is a very much beloved fantasy writer who was um, on his own live stream um, unboxing something that From Software had sent him and he said he already had an idea of what the next game would be. Yes. And so it seemed like um, Miyazaki or FromSoft or whatever are already planning whatever the next thing is. And that's, you know, you would slot Brandon Sanderson into the George R.R. R. Martin role yeah. and do the next Elden Ring that way. Well, this is the thing, like, From Software have an incredible track record, but mm. the way that these, they turn around those games is also insane. Yeah. Like, if you look at, you know, Dark Souls 1 into Dark Souls 2 into Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, Sekiro, and now Elden Ring, there's only been, like, like three years between Sekiro yeah. and uh, Elden Ring, if I'm getting my dates right, which you I are. very much might be not. Uh, <laughs> you uh, are. But yeah, like that's crazy. Obviously, it was in development before then, but mm. like the turnover of, over on these games is nuts compared to the size of them and the quality of them. Mm. So I don't kind of want them to lose any of that momentum to start taking, you know, no. a little bit longer between releases. Because for me, I know that you might disagree with me on a part of this, Scott, in terms of you know repeated animations or repeated kind <laughs> of uh, potential, you know, textures or what have you. Yes. Weapons and stuff like that but for me I just think it's it's crazy how they have managed to repurpose a lot of older content and still deliver something fresh like if you look at Elden Ring it has a lot of enemies from you know like Dark Souls or Bloodborne oh, yeah. or whatever like are kind of tweaked but also just not in some cases and yeah it still feels fresh it still feels like a new game they have a toolbox that they know works really well mm. and they managed to implement every one of those tools in an interesting way every time they make a game. And I wonder if, uh, you know, you suddenly, you, you, you're under the Sony umbrella, this is now a flagship, whatever they're going to release is now a flagship thing for PlayStation, if that means that they then have to have a certain level of production quality that we do associate with Sony exclusives, whether they are first party or just Sony branded stuff. Yeah. And that means the, the fanciest teeth in the land, the fanciest skin pores in the land, everything other than why Elden Ring is a big deal, I would say, like something that focuses entirely on gameplay. Um, I guess let's just say this goes through. What's your immediate reaction? Do you, do you, are you, are you happy for the future of FromSoft? Are you just like, oh, you've lost some quintessential element that makes you from software? I I think they'd still make good games. I'd still yes. think they'd, you know, retain their, hopefully their independent spirit. You'd hope that Sony wouldn't mess with that. And mm. in the past when they have bought people, you know, they've kind of said that, yeah, we have managed to stay, you know, as true to our ethos as a, as a company and mm. what have you. I would just purely be upset about something that people love being gated off from them. And yes. that always sucks, you know, especially when they've had this history of predominantly being a multi-platform studio. I know they have had relationships with Sony before, mm -hmm. but yeah, that would kind of be the thing I'd focus on. I don't think the games would be that affected necessarily. And if anything, they might get a higher level of quality because of mm -hmm. all the support that um, Sony could bring to the table. All of the resources that they could bring, which you know I love. I'm a big fan of, you know, high quality pause. On he loves the leaves. Uh, but uh, my, my biggest issue with this is that it's just unnecessary. Yes. And it's a good business move, but it's also bad for fans, I think. It's a, it's a hell of a potential move, especially when you look at it on that wider scale thing of, you know, Xbox are going to have all the Bethesda exclusives and there's all the potential deals that they're going to be making going forward. Obviously, acquisitions are being talked about a hell of a lot. Um, and only a few weeks ago, we were talking about the potential of them acquiring Square Enix, who, for me, are a way... I mean, obviously, there's the Final Fantasy series. Obviously, it's Square Enix. But the last few years of Square Enix have been very rocky. Like, yeah. they put all their eggs in the Avengers basket and then they all splattered 
in there to come back to Final Fantasy VII Remake to resurrect them. And it's one of those things where FromSoft are just absolutely flying. They make more sense as an acquisition, but yeah. because of that, they are harder to get. You make it a great point there, Scott. I didn't think about it in these terms. When it comes to people like Activision, even Bethesda, Square Enix, who potentially, you know, who knows, there's a lot of rumors about that. Mm. And when it comes to those teams, it's kind of like then they, they weren't at their peak. You know, no. Activision obviously has everything embroiled around all the allegations that came out in the other year. And then you look at their games, they're also kind of stagnant in terms of where Call of Duty is sales-wise and stuff. Yeah. They're not where they were, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. So mm -hmm. they're a more, they're an acquisition that would go down with fans better because you mm -hmm. look at those companies and you can see room they need for saving. improvement. Yeah, yeah, they need saving <laughs> in a lot of ways. You look at From Software and it's not a kind of thing of, oh, you're, you're gonna you know, raise them up. It's mm -hmm. kind of like, well, they're doing fine. What can they possibly gain? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're only adding negatives rather than positives in a way that you um, wouldn't get if you did buy, you know, Square Enix, if you have bought uh, Bethesda or Activision, mm -hmm. in my opinion. No, man, totally. I think, let us know what you think down in the comments below. Let's say this goes through. Is this better for From Software going forward? Is this better for the games that they're going to be making? And what do you think of the idea of FromSoft, Elden Ring 2, whatever, being PlayStation exclusive at some point, if this all happens to be true? For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Toot. <laughs>